How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben here, your friendly doctor dad who cares about you and today we're gonna be getting my car! Yes, I am finally upgrading my 10 year old, uh, it's actually 20 years old, to 2003 Nissan Sentra that I've had for 10 years to my first big boy car, big boy gay, gay big boy car and it is a Subaru Outback and I'm really excited because I got it from Carvana. I didn't want it from Carvana for the people who are uh, judging me uh, for buying it from there but almost every single every single loan company that I applied to denied me because I have too much debt and I'm like I don't understand why you're denying me if I have too much debt because I'm a medical student I'm gonna have too much debt I'm first generation but it is what it is I was able to get uh, a loan financing loan with a good APR approved from Carvana I tried Capital One and some credit unions they still gave me about like 14 percent ish um apr rates which were terrible so carvana gave me a nine percent rate which was perfect so we're gonna go pick that up but before that um we have i have a classmate coming over for headshots for residency so she's applying for residency next year so i have my little studio set up so this is my home studio that i make for clients and i charge a very cheap flat rate it's fifty dollars and i have like this expandable little headshot canvas, my little stool, and my camera that I usually use to record my educational videos uh, in between my vlog videos that I post once a week, usually if I stick to schedule. So yeah, we're going to be doing that and I'm very excited because I'll be making some money. But I wish I got more clients this year. Uh, last year I got so, many more, so much more clients, but for some reason my current <laughs> class uh, they don't have as much faith in me or maybe they got some some other plug when it comes to headshots but I take pretty good ones I mean I got almost 21 interviews for med school and I've been told that my headshot was pretty good and I've seen some pretty terrible ones so uh, if you're watching this <laughs> and you're in the area hire me for headshots Another super quickie update is that I got most of my stuff sold already. So I know it looks like my whole place is still furnished, but that's because I wanted to look presentable up until maybe the last two weeks that I'm here in Georgia. But uh, I had a lot of friends who took me up on the offer to take um, my stuff. So I have someone buying the Calyx bookshelves. I think what I'm going to do is just get rid of the tabletop and the legs of this desk, but keep the uh, drawers because it is actually pretty nice. And it's the most costly part of this entire desk. So this desk in total was $140 when I bought it. The legs were $10. The table was like maybe like $30-ish. But this one, this unit for sure was $90. So it took up more than half the price of the actual table. So I'm going <coughs> to keep the drawers because they're going to be handy. Don't know what to do with this yet, but we'll probably donate. Nobody wants it because it's a rackety old table. Um, but got the dresser taken up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the footboard and headboard of this and get a more sturdier frame. Uh, I think that's the best bet because what I had the most trouble with, with this bed was the actual frame. Uh, it wasn't optimal and it took forever to make and it doesn't do a really good job and it's kind of flimsy. So if I feel like if I just take the headboards and get a heavy duty frame that I had when I first moved out, which was cheap but kind of ugly. Um, because it didn't have a headboard or footboard, I'll have the perfect bed frame because I actually really love the look of this bed frame. I love that it's metal and it's pretty cute. Um, so yeah, most of the furniture is taken up. Oh, the coffee table is claimed too. I'm going to give it away to a friend. Um, so that'll be nice. So the last thing to do is to get rid of the couch. Which is going to be a bit of a doozy because someone's going to have to get their friends to come up here and take it away from them oh and the washer dryer someone actually claimed the washer dryer and they're going to hire some movers and take these bad boys with them so all in all i think it's a successful uh selling my stuff cycle for residency all right y'all photo shoot is done it went super super well it was done pretty quickly i am sporting a pretty mask fit right now to take an uber down to the carvana vending machine down here in atlanta and pick up my car i'm gonna try to get a shot of the vending machine i'm not sure if i'll succeed in it but we'll see i'm just so excited to get my subaru out back 
Hey y'all, so I just got back home with my new car. Jean-Luc and I are matching. Black and white. White and black. Well, mostly white, a little gray. But I just got back with the Subaru from Carvana and oh my gosh, it is such a pretty car. I actually wasn't too excited by the fact that it's white, but the white actually looks really good in the Subaru. And um, going to Carvana was actually super, super chill. I ended up taking an Uber, which only costed like uh, $14. I gave my driver a $5 tip because um, he was a student. He was a couple of years younger than me. And <clears throat> it just seems like he's trying to get back on his, get on his feet, not get back, but get on his feet after graduating from college. And like, we talked a lot and like, you know, I used to be an Uber driver. I talked about that in, only in the last, John looks just doing something he shouldn't be doing, but only in the last couple of weeks, I deleted my Uber delivery driver app. So I, uh, I kind of sympathize with the guy and you know, he's, He's at a position in his life where I used to be a couple years ago. So yeah, um, driving over to the Carvana Tower was interesting. I didn't think the tower was as big as it was as it looks from like the outside. So I've seen the tower driving through Atlanta, but it always seemed like so huge to me, like the vending machine. But it wasn't that big. Maybe like a couple of floors, like <clears throat> maybe like. 10 ish but not like a huge skyscraper for some reason in my mind it was like a skyscraper size but it's not too big i was in there uh it was not a busy day so i actually got my car pretty quickly there was nobody in front of me but it also meant that the workers weren't taking it as seriously um there was nobody at the reception when i first walked in and somebody came out and was like oh okay but um it was really painless and seamless they didn't try to sell me anything i really appreciated that they did tell me about their warranty and <clears throat> all these other services, but I did not care at all. <laughs> yes, I still have that cough. Um, so yeah, um, and then I saw the tower, my car come down from the tower, they gave me this cute little coin that I put in the vending machine and the car comes down after I put it in and then I just drove off with the car. The car in itself is excellent, it's amazing, it handles super, super well, I mean, I drove a Toyota RAV4 back when I went to Miami on vacation and I really loved that car. But one big issue I had with that car was that the handling, it felt like a really bulky car. This Outback has as much cubic space of storage, cargo space, as the RAV4, but it handles like my tiny little Nissan sedan. So I really enjoy driving it. Um, it felt like there was like no adjusting period. The only thing that I had to get used to was, you know, adjusting my mirrors and then that the, the blind spot detector, just being aware of those things. But other than that, this car drives so smoothly. It was the hood, it, it's pretty clean, but the hood was um, just a t tiny bit dirty. So I think I'm gonna take it to the car wash tonight. Um, just because I think on um, doing transport, you know, cars probably was an open transport trailer and it probably just hit a bunch of dirt on the way on the hood. There was a spider on the hood too that I had to wave off. But other than that, the car is doing excellent. I don't need to do an oil change. It looks like um, Carvana did an oil change already, but it does look like I need to uh, re get a brake fluid flush. I also noticed that a lot of the fluids were a little low, so I had to redo the, add some washer fluid and add some coolant. But luckily I always keep that stuff in my car because I'm, a, I wouldn't say I'm a car expert, but I am a bit of a car guy and make sure my car is maintained. So I think later on tonight, I'm gonna take it to the car wash, get it clean, maybe put, buff some wax on it, some ceramic wax, make sure the paint is protected because I'm gonna keep this car for a very, very, very long time. So I just finished lunch and two days ago on Thursday, I went to go play basketball with my friends Sara and Angela. And after basketball, we went to Super H Mart over in Chambly. If you're an Atlanta native, you know where that's at. But something that we noticed is that we had Chupa Chups. If you don't know what Chupa Chups is, it is a very famous international lollipop brand, but apparently they also have their own sparkling drinks. And this one is flavored strawberry and cream flavor. I've seen strawberry sparkling drinks, but never strawberry and cream. And I was looking at it, Sarah was like, hey, I'm gonna get this for you for the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm always looking for cool things to check out with y'all. So she bought it for me. Sara, this one's for you. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try it. I did shake it up a little bit, so I'm hoping uh it doesn't blast on my face. Alright, let's go. Oh, okay, so it's sparkling, but it's not super super carbonated. 
<laughs> okay, so this smells a lot like if you've ever had one of those wafer candies it's very famous for Asia, like among asian families to buy them for kids but it's like these cream wafer candies you can buy at an asian market it a typical flavor for those wafer candies is either like plain vanilla chocolate and another one is strawberry and it tastes like strawberries and cream and it smells it smells exactly like those wafer candies. So we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, it doesn't taste like cream that much, but there is a creamy component to it. Mm. It's good. It actually tastes like bubble gum. It's John Luke. It actually tastes like bubble gum strawberry, like it tastes like if bubblegum was turned into a liquid drink, strawberry bubblegum. This is exactly what it tastes like. I don't really get the wafer creamy flavor that I usually get when I eat wafers. That's strawberry and cream flavor. It smells a lot like it, but definitely tastes like bubblegum strawberry soda. So I actually think this is really good and it's absolutely terrible for you if you're trying to keep sugars down, but a great little snack for your little treat yourself a uh, drink also update oh let me turn on the light i set up the mac studio and i used it to edit my most recent video right before this hi john luke say hi um and i have to say this has totally streamlined my workflow so right now i have changed the setup so that the camera is right in front on top of the screen so now i can actually use my dslr as a webcam and i don't need a dedicated webcam that takes up more space takes up more wiring on my desk and then now i don't have a big i don't have a big computer on my desk i just have a big little jean luc isn't that right baby but here's the mac studio i hate the fact that there's so many wires back here but i'm hoping that once i get settled into my new place in durham i'll get some wire catchers and some um, organizers, like wire organizers, and just clean this place up a bit. But overall, doesn't this look so much more sleeker as an office space? Like, I just think it looks great. And I think Jean-Luc really likes it. So now he can spend time with me when I'm doing stuff on the computer and he can just chill by my side. Also, the Mac Studio, of course, is amazing. Like, uh, my workflow, I can work with 4K video with ease and I just love it. It's, please don't die. You were very expensive. I need you to not die for at least five years until I'm an attending physician. So I just finished my ACL, ACLS training, which is the advanced cardiac life support training that I need to do before I start residency and pass. There's like a pre-course assignment and like I, I take the actual course this week, but I needed an 84% and tell me why y'all. The la I've had to do this test five times because every single time I would only get like 83%. It was pissing me off. But finally, after about two hours, I got up to 87%. I just got to print this out um, sometime this week and then before my course. And then I can take my course. <clears throat> and oh my God, I've been wanting to take my car out, install my little dash um, attachment for my phone, for the maps. And... Take, a, take it out for like a car wash and then detail it because I want to make sure the paint is sealed. Like this car is such a big investment. There's no way I'm going to take any risk. It's going to get some enameled sealing in every six months. There's just no risks taken. Hey y'all, so I'm a big dummy. <laughs> I just realized that my car has a temporary tag right now. And the dealerships, usually when they put temporary tags on, they use the cheapest paper possible for those tags. So if I took it to a formal car wash, uh, my tag is gonna get destroyed and <laughs> I can't take it to a formal car wash. So on my way there, I realized that. So I was like, okay, there's like a self car wash I can go to down the street because um, then I can avoid the tag and wash my car that way. But turns out it's Sunday and Everybody's using those self-service washes before they go to work the next day. So 
I can't wash my car this week. I could go potentially tomorrow, but I have my ACLS test coming up and I do want to prioritize that. So right now what I'm going to think I'm going <coughs> to do is I have actually a spot detailer, a ceramic spot detailer and just spot detail my car. <coughs> I am dying y'all. It's been six weeks. Uh, but what I'm going to do is take the spot detailer and spot detail the Outback. Luckily, the Outback is kind of low to the ground, so I can like get to most of it except for the hood. Um, and then sometime next week, I'll take, to, take it to a formal car wash and actually fully detail it because I have a full detailer too. So we're going to spot detail it just to make sure the car is crisp, crisp and clean um, for now and just make sure it's safe. And because uh, recently my back hurts, uh, when I bend down too long or whenever I do a lot of labor intensive things, my back does hurt. So I'm going to put on a belt and then spot detail this car. So wish me luck. All right, y'all. So I wanted to make sure I did this responsibly and not harm myself. So a lot of these ceramic spray coatings have silicone in them. So before I even started detailing the car, I made sure to put on an N95 mask to make sure I don't inhale any silicone particles. Silicone, as you know, can be damaging to the lungs not to the depth that i'm doing it now but i just didn't want to take any risk whatsoever and i just buffed the entire car getting rid of any smudges and anything else that could uh make the car look kind of ugly and this is the final product y'all i buffed it down there were a couple of smudges here and there that i really made sure to buff out as much as possible and she is looking so pretty not as shiny as she was with the factory wax but it's all right she looks so good and of course by the time i'm done i'm a hot sweaty mess i am sweating all over it took about an hour and 30 minutes to do all of that huffing and puffing and buffing but you know it's all worth it and i ended up using all my microfiber cloths like all like 15 <laughs> of my microfiber cloths but we did a great job i i can't believe i did that all in one day it is the next day after detailing my car and taking a really really long shower because i was so sweaty after that but um uh, i spent most of today um studying for my acls certification test on wednesday so today's monday i have two days left if you don't know what acls is it stands for advanced cardiac life support i'm sure i talked about this earlier in this vlog but it's more like an advanced cpr course so um, bls stands for basic life support and that's where you get the training to become cpr certified acls is usually when someone loses their pulse or has some form of heart arrhythmia in the hospital where we have access to medications and electrical devices and a whole team of people that can get involved in making sure the patient um comes comes to and uh we don't we don't lose a life that is uh preventable uh from losing their life i don't know if i worded that correctly but essentially it is a very more advanced version of cpr which has a higher probability of a good outcome in the hospital setting but um i realize i'm having a really hard time with it because uh cardiology is uh, honestly one of my uh least favorite and um I'm also not that good at cardiology compared to the other organ systems in medical school. I'm good at like blood vessels, pulmonology and all other stuff, but cardiology is one of my least strong suits and I've, I haven't really been actively studying for the past couple of weeks. So I have been having to study a lot more than I thought I would, which is surprising. Um, but I'm doing well. I passed my pretest and I passed, uh, I did my pre pre-coursework so on wednesday when i go in it's going to be a five hour course where i get both bls and acls certified and i think i'm pretty prepared for it i just finished watching a good group of videos and i'm just going to do some exercises today and tomorrow do some like flashcards, and hopefully i'll pass but um yeah uh, i think I'll, I'll deliver good news by the end of this uh when i got these printed out at ups today y'all guess what i found I found more of those beautiful, beautiful Kenneth Cole shirts. This one is like in a burnt orange kind of thing. Pastel orange. I think I have the burnt orange and I wore that in the last vlog. And pastel pink, which I'm super, super excited about. As you all know, I freaking love these Kenneth Cole shirts. I mean, they are the best for my body. They are for short, stocky men and <laughs> They fit me so well. I think 
I, Kenneth Cole, I'm a big ass simp for you. Um, I got them for nine dollars at Marshalls, which uh, it's such a steal. Cause if you want buy them full price on like Amazon, I put the affiliate link below um, below in the other vlog that I did. They're like forty dollars. So for me to be able to be find, uh, finding these in like TJ Maxx, I think I'm gonna make it my life mission once I start getting a salary job, like once I start getting my residency paychecks, to go to as many TJ Maxx and Marshalls as possible and collect as many of these shirts as as I can so I can wear them for the rest of my life because they're just so perfect for my body and they're just so soft and comfortable and premium quality. There's never a, like any piling in these shirts. Ugh. They're just so good. Another recommendation I have if you want cheap shirts that look good on short, stocky men are Target's Goodfellow uh, Company t-shirts. The only gripe that I have with them, although that they're cheap, that they're they're like six, seven dollars, they pile a lot. And after a couple of uses, like maybe like wearing them for about two months, they just don't look good anymore. And you gotta buy more. These Kenneth Cole shirts, some of them I've had for over a year and they just look fantastic so yeah uh i'm gonna be the biggest kenneth cole shirt hoarder uh that ever exists i've been also driving my car for three days now and yeah i love this car this car is amazing she has a big booty uh big boot I'm, i think i'm gonna name her i know my last car's name was tamale my first longtime girlfriend named my car that I usually give the honor of whoever I'm dating to name things that I own. Like um, Jean-Luc is actually named after the favorite character of one of my exes' um, favorite TV show, Star Trek. He's named after Captain Jean-Luc Picard in <coughs> one of the iterations of Star Trek, I know. Um, but I usually give my par partners, whoever I'm dating, um, the honors of naming things that I like. But right now I'm single so nobody can name my car. So I decided um, the other day, I was making an Instagram story about how bad of a parking job I did. And I said my Subaru, I didn't realize Subaru's Outbacks had such a big booty. So maybe I'll start calling my <laughs> uh, car my big booty Subaru. And yes, that is objectifying. But um, if you are going to objectify anything, objectify an object not a person so that's my <laughs> reasoning for calling my Subaru that because I will never say that uh degradingly towards a human being but for a car yeah I think it's appropriate <laughs> hey y'all so it is the morning of my uh my ACLS exam it is gloomy and chilly for spring weather, Georgia has been pretty chilly those last couple of weeks. But I'm feeling pretty confident. I spent all day uh, last evening studying for the exam. Uh, I don't think I have everything 100% down, but I don't think you really can unless you've done it at least once. But I feel confident going in. I talked to some of my friends who've done it and gotten their certification. They said it's almost impossible to fail. They said that um, they do this. This is an opportunity for you to practice a simulation and then when you're at the real thing you'll know what to do so uh, they don't try to <clears throat> unless you didn't do any of the review uh, you can't really fail so uh, I feel pretty confident going in and Jean-Luc feels pretty confident he's like daddy come home quickly uh, so we got this we got this in the bag and then uh, we'll see I'll see y'all on the other side Hey y'all, how's it going? Oh my God, it's been hours, but I'm finally freaking done with this ACLS test. Uh, it was not so bad. It was just so long. So I came in this morning at like 9 a.m. And it's, it's like just hit one o'clock. So I've been there for what? <laughs> I think my music started. <laughs> oh my God, y'all know I'm such arena stan. But yeah, um, it just took so freaking long and I'm so hungry. So um, I think I passed, honestly. It was just so, so chill. I think I freaked out for no reason. And even the written test was pretty straightforward. So I should be getting my card sometime tomorrow. And that part of my onboarding at Duke is going to be done. Uh, I'm thinking I should treat myself because I'm starving. 
uh, and I'm right next to Buford Highway. It's a Buford Highway famous strip in Atlanta. And it's been, it's, it's, it's dark, it's cold, it's clammy, it's rainy. So I think it's like the perfect weather for some hot pot. So we're gonna go over to High Pot, have lunch, and then head home. So going over to High Pot, I didn't really go in with any expectation, but I was really surprised by the presentation of this restaurant. I've never been to a restaurant like this before. They had a large number of Hot Pot flavors to choose from. I chose the classic beef Hot Pot, but you really can go with anything that you want from curry to tom yum to Korean kimchi to even lobster. Uh, <laughs> Hot pot, so that was super cool, but I went for the regular Taiwanese style beef hot pot. It's my first time trying Taiwanese style. I usually go for Sichuan style, but um, it was pretty cool here. And there's a TV on the top of this restaurant, which I've never seen before. And also this robot, like this robot rice server. This robot never went to me. Uh, it only went to the couples that were here and also the coworkers, but I was alone. So uh, the server ended up giving me my rice bowl anyways. And this is my hot pot. It looks so, so good. It was so delicious. Uh, I didn't realize that Taiwanese hot pot had tomatoes in it. The flavor profile was definitely interesting, really creamy, not like Sichuan hot pot at all which is the only type of hot pot flavor I've really tried before this, um, in addition to the traditional Chinese like bone broth flavor. So I actually like really enjoyed this because it was a different flavor profile, not as spice heavy, but definitely very, very flavorful. It was mm -mm, tasty. Besides that dramatic entrance back home, I got some hot pot stains on my new t-shirt but that is expected from hot pot it was such a fulfilling uh meal that was my first time trying taiwanese style uh hot pot i liked it a lot i still like the such one style a little bit more but it was <clears throat> it was a nice like um nice try out i never had tomatoes in my hot pot and also they included clams in my hot pot so those were like interesting additions that i got to try um, at High Pot. I highly recommend that place. It's just the Sichuan style is just a little bit more flavorful uh, and how I like it. But but the Taiwanese style was a little creamy. I like I like that. That was really cool. Like creamy brothiness. Also, I noticed that there's a curry flavor that I absolutely must try the next time over there. Don't know when the next time I'm gonna go there. But uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, that was the first solo date to a food place I've done by myself. Usually, um, I never really go out <laughs> to restaurants and stuff unless I'm going with a friend or a partner. So um, last time I did something like this was almost two years ago at this point. Um, and yeah, it was it was interesting. There were so many couples there <laughs> and so many people uh, who are there with their coworkers because it was around lunchtime. Uh, definitely something that I'm gonna get ha have to get used to because uh, uh, your boy is i've only been yeah yeah your boy is uh, back not back on the market but um your boy is not partnered <laughs> yeah and another thing i realized is that i had no one to talk to while i was having lunch so i was sitting by myself and eating which can look to the outside world as like a sad person <laughs> a sad lonely person which i was a little bit but I had time to sit down with my thoughts and collect my thoughts and evaluate what I did for today and just be proud of the fact that, you know, hey, I just did that five hour course. I'm about to pass out. I'm hungry AF, but I'm having lunch. I'm treating myself and I could give a 20% tip. So those are things that I'm really proud of because if I were to go with like a partner, I would most, I would offer to pay and not be able to give as big of a tip, but now I can give a 20% tip that I'm really proud of. So those are like the little wins that I give myself. Um, yeah, just to be a happy person because you don't always need to be partnered to enjoy life and just to enjoy, uh, you know, enjoy dating yourself. Anyways, y'all, I'm about to hit the sack for a quick nap, but that is it for this week's vlog. I am so, so glad that y'all got to follow me on my journey of getting my first, like, dealership car. Oh my god, like, my 
it's no longer a shady apartment dealer that with that, that I bought for 2k and it was super super rusted that I had to fix uh, I, I put more into the repairs of that my previous car than I did on the actual car so and I'm really really happy with this car I got to test it out in this gloomy rainy weather today and it is fantastic there was no at no point where I was on a hill where the car went backwards the all-wheel drive works perfectly and um, <laughs> my window defroster works defogger works <laughs> which uh, these are low winds but they're wins and I can't believe for most of my life I lived in so much poverty that I never even got the opportunity to experience some of these joys that the majority of people get to experience like having a decent freaking car to get you around town and like choosing someone choosing the car that you uh, pick to get around town and that's reliable uh, anyways, y'all, thank y'all so much for joining me on this journey. And uh, your boy is still uh, going through it a little bit mentally, but I'm in a much better place. I kind of ebb and flow. Uh, I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, but that's going to be how it is for a while. And I don't know when I'll get better, but all I got to do is that's... Uh, I, I just got to acknowledge that's just how life is sometimes, and I just got to keep pushing because at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my own mental health. Uh, although society has a big impact on it, how people treat me has a big impact on it, I can choose to decide on how it impacts me and what I will do to be self-reliant. That's all I can really wish for. Anyways, love y'all. This is Dr. Ben.